Okay, this is the P3 paper from October 2020. It's question number seven. If we have a look at this question, we can see this is a trig addition formula question and specifically where we're trying to simplify a cos x plus b sine x, in this case, into the format r cos x minus alpha. Okay, that bit's not too bad. Uh, if we look at the rest of it, we can see they're then going to have some quite complicated function here, h equals 24 over all that stuff. And we're gonna to need to find the minimum height and we're gonna to need to find those two bits. That might not be great, but certainly the first part, we should absolutely make sure we've done lots of practice of this technique because uh, they're very standardized and they're worth, in this case, three marks. So it's asking us to simplify cos x plus four sine x in this case equal to r cos x minus alpha. Let's just go back and have another quick look. Right, uh, exact value for r and alpha, three decimal places and working in radians. Okay, so we can do that. So cos x plus four sine alpha then, four sine x, sorry, is equal to we are just expanding that, cos A minus B. You absolutely need to know these. I don't care whether they're on any formula sheet or anything, just learn them by rote shovel, all, all of them in your head. So cos A minus B is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So in this particular case then, that's gonna give me R cos cos plus, and I'll put the R in straight away, sine X sine. Alpha. Now, as soon as we've got that situation, we are going to equate the coefficients. I write it down. What does that actually mean? What it means is, if I look at the cos x, the value that I've got next to it is 1. I can't see the value is 1 there. So that must be the same as whatever is next to the cos x there. So in this case, that's going to give me 1 equals r cos alpha. And if I do the same principle here, four is gonna be the same as what I'm multiplying by sine x on that side. So four works out to be r sine alpha. We always get very similar equations at this point. So I know there are various different methods of doing this. I always go with the idea that if I label these two equations, one and two, I can solve these simultaneously with a very clever step of doing two divided by one. If I do two divided by one, this divided by this, the R's cancel and I get tan alpha. On the other side, in this case, four divided by one, so four. If tan alpha is equal to four, then alpha is just tan to the minus one of four. Remind myself at this stage, am I working in radians or degrees? I'm working in radians, it said, and it also said in this particular bit um, to do alpha to three decimal places. So done. When I'm working out R, if I go back here and again, if I think about these two coefficients, one and four here, then R is simply equal to, oops, simply equal to the square root of one squared plus four squared which in this case, sometimes it'll give me a, a, not a third, but here it's giving me root 17, which is the exact value. So just make sure we answer the question at the end. So the question said, cos x plus four sine x is the same as root 17 cos x minus 1.326. Okay, and that is my actual answer, answer. Don't need to have that underlined there. Yep, so I've done that and I've solved it exactly as they wanted to do. Part A, done. Exact value of R and alpha to three decimal places. Right, let's look at this second bit. These can sometimes be a bit complicated. Uh, so they're saying, right, they're, they're just modeling something. Um, a scientist is studying the behavior of seabirds h is given the height above sea level of whatever okay so h is this 
function here, t seconds after, the t yeah, well, I'll, I'll go back to all of that if I actually need to do it, Part B, find the minimum height of the seabird above sea level. Right, okay, so I can see what I've got to do here. Just slowly go through this. If I want the whole of this thing to be the minimum, then when I'm dividing by something, I want this bit to be as big as it can possibly be. Because if you divide by a big number, you're going to get smaller, smaller numbers, aren't they? So what that really means is I want that to be as big as it can possibly be, or rather... I want this to be as big as it can possibly be. Now, immediately I recognize, obviously, that that part of the function there is the same as this thing up here. It's cos plus four sine. So if I go back to what I had before, what we're now saying is, can I find the maximum value of that? Absolutely you can. If you've done work on this, this should be really straightforward. One of the things that they asked for once I've written my function in this format is what's the maximum and this minimum that this can possibly be because it's really quick. The maximum that cos can be is one. So the maximum that all of this bit can be is just root 17. Not gonna take any time over that. It's a standard thing to do. So I've explained it to you guys. I now need to explain it to the examiner. This isn't too bad at all. So let's just write out what H was. So H was equal to 24 all divided by 3 plus cos a half t plus 4 sine a half t. Yeah, I might have just underplayed the fact that I was looking at that bit there and recognizing that as being part A, but they're relatively um, similar in the way that they do those sorts of things. The function is not very nice. Um, so looking at this, yeah, now if I want the minimum h for the minimum h comma I want maximum cos half t plus four sine half t. Okay, that's just explaining it to the examiner. So in this case, I'm going to get h equals 24 over 3 plus, and I don't need to do any work necessarily explaining this, root 17. So h works out to be equal to, let's just go back and have a little bit more of a look at the model here. The minimum height, giving your answer to the nearest centimetre, okay. Yeah, and h is measured in metres. Okay, so if I want it to the nearest centimetre when h is measured in metres, if I do that calculation, that comes to 3.37 to two decimal places. And the second decimal place there is centimeters, isn't it? If this is a measurement in meters. So if I do it to two decimal places, that's the same as doing it to the nearest centimeter in this case. Right, okay, that wasn't too bad. That was all right. So uh, yeah, it's only worth two marks, I suppose, but uh, no real issues with that one. Part C, find the value of t to two decimal places when h equals 10. And h equals 10 there. Right, okay, so it's going to be a bit bit of a trek going through and doing it, but at least I know what I've got to do. That made the understanding a bit difficult. It's actually not going to be very nice, is it, when I go through and try and solve this. So if they're saying h is equal to 10, then they're saying 24 all over uh, three plus cos half t plus four sine a half t is equal to 10. Now at some stage, I'm gonna swap this out for this business here. It's up to you when you do that, you could do that straight away and work with it. Uh, I'm probably just going to tidy it up a little bit first. So what I'm going to do is take this up to this side first of all. And actually, I'm going to take the 10 down at the same stage. You can take as many steps as you want to do this. I'm going to say 24 over 10 is equal to 3 plus cos. And then this business, half t plus 4 sine. Half t. So if 2.4 is equal to 3 plus 
that business. I'm nearly at the stage where I'll do the substitution over. If I take the three over, I'm gonna get minus 0 0.6 is equal to cos a half t plus four sine a half t. And now at this stage, I'm gonna do the bit that I did previously, which was once I got that, to actually now write down that minus 0 0.6 is equal to, what do we have it as? Yeah, root 17, cos, and it was x minus alpha, so it's a half t minus, what was it from before, 1.326, so now we just have to solve this and it's just how much uh, information do we actually want to give the examiner with regards to getting the final answer from this bit. Uh, when I'm doing it, I'll go through and show you in a reasonable amount of detail. But um, in terms of the examiner and the answer scheme now, it's just going to be pretty much... Um, there's just one mark for the answer from this bit onwards. So um, I'll go through and I'll explain it. I'll take a little bit of time to explain this to you, but you don't need to go through as much detail as I'm gonna do here. You could jump, not straight to the answer, but pretty much um, very quickly to the answer here. All I'm gonna do is go through and give a little bit of an explanation of how we do this. Remembering that we're working in radians again. So we have minus 0 0.6 over root 17 is going to be equal to a cos half t minus 1.326. And then if you uh, cos to the minus 1 that, so at this stage we're going to get a half t minus 1.326 is going to be equal to, well again this is the bit that you don't necessarily need to do but I'll just explain it to you. All sine, tan and cos. Okay, if we're going to get that it's um, a negative, then my answer is in one of these two um, possibilities. So we get that it works out to be 1.7168 or it works out to be 4.566. Now, simply because of the constraints of my answer, I'm only actually going to take that one. You could take both of them, work it all the way through, and then work it out. I just want to save myself a little bit of time on the video here. So if I get rid of that answer, I'll get that half T worked out to be equal to 3.0428, which means then that T works out to be equal to double that, which is 6.0856. Or rather 6.09 because it asked it to two decimal places. Now, as I say, in my final answer, I'm not necessarily going to have that. I don't necessarily need all that. I'm happy just to go with that one there. But if you wanted a little bit more help on which values to choose, there you need to go back to my previous videos on solving basic trig. But I can't do that at this stage, otherwise, the video would take too long to do. Uh, but by all means, go back and look at the channel. There's other other videos that go through and mention those sorts of things. So yeah, not, not too bad for four marks there. Um, these functions here, they're really imaginative, or they can be really imaginative with what's going on here, but it's focusing on that particular bit there and seeing if that's a maximum or minimum, what impact does that have on H being maximums or minimums? Okay, hopefully that one makes sense.